Hey, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. Beginning of the week, we're doing something awesome. I can't wait to show you the progress of this project. It's gonna be in my top 10, and I know I say that all the time, but really, no. I've been waiting to do this project for a very long time. But before I get into all the detail of this project, because there's a lot, and you guys are gonna be seeing a lot of it. We're gonna be out here for over a month. I thought before we got into all that, I'd take you on what we did last week, because it was fun. We built an awesome pond for an awesome guy. He's been waiting for that pond for over a year. He's got awesome views from down in the basement, out of the kitchen, new patio went in. It's such a cool project. And then Chris Hansen and I got out together. We started fixing a project. I can't wait to show you what we discovered out there. But a little secret, it was a tree root about this big. <laughs> We're gonna show you how we fixed that thing because it's so, so important. Our maintenance division is just as important as our construction division. And this is gonna be one educational week for you guys. Hang on tight, here we go. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. So one of my favorite ponds of all time, really because of this bridge right here. I just love it, two elevations. Unfortunately, the pond has developed a leak and we put this in probably a good, I don't know, it feels like 10 years ago. Really cool, big wide waterfall right there. We have a spillway that comes out there and another spillway that comes out there framed around this big giant rock. So really cool cascading falls there. This rock is fed by that spillway, plus a biofall all the way over there that dumps into this relatively big pond. And believe it or not, the whole thing is filtered with just one biofalls and it stays really really clean and despite all of the trees and stuff and I think what's so fascinating is people are always worried about putting ponds underneath trees like this is underneath every tree every tree falls into this and it's pretty clean somehow or another it's developed a leak and through testing we know that it leaks when coming out of this spillway here we also know when it leaks coming out of there the one thing those two spillways share is this big rock here so we're gonna start pulling this apart gently one rock at a time hoping to find very obvious fold in the liner that got moved over time. I suspect it's some type of critter because I see chipmunks all over the place and leaks behind big boulders don't just happen without some kind of reason. <laughs> it's not because of settling or anything like that. So I'm guessing we're going to find some kind of hole, but we're going to start pulling this apart. Hopefully we find it really fast and then we can patch it and put it back together. The key is to putting it back together basically exactly the way it was before. So here we go. It's not going smooth. <laughs> Just bought some almonds and I've been sneaking over there eating almonds. What? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're delicious. We had a spillway there. It was dropping this way. We have a spillway where Chris was. It was dropping that way. We were hoping to find some kind of critter hole, but that's not what we found. We found probably a mistake we made way back when, but this liner here comes up. This liner is attached to all of this back and through here. I'll show you what they're working on in a second, but it's attached to here. It then overlaps the pond liner, which is all the way down there by Chris's hand which is fine, that was working just fine. Then you have this liner that Chris's left hand is on. It's the one that fed the spillway over here. Problem we had is the way this liner here overlapped this one. They overlap kind of vertically, which I guess is a no-no. <laughs> and we knew, I don't know why it was done that way. Chris has also got his hand on a pretty big tree root that's gone down in between the liner and the fabric. That's gonna cause some kind of problem if we don't get it out of there, just the way it's angled in there. But we gotta get that out of there. So the plan is to come um, seam these two liners together. We've ripped everything out. It's, it'd be a miracle if it all goes back together exactly the way we saw it before. Chris is super confident about it, but that's why he's here. Keep the confidence. So we're gonna head to move through this. It's almost 11. We need to wrap this up in the next few hours, which I think is doable. If not, we'll come back tomorrow. It is what it is. Over here, the rock that Matt is standing on had a definite burrow from a chipmunk. So we thought for sure we'd lift that rock, find a chipmunk hole. That's not what we found at all. What we found is that that 
that hosta back there was growing over the liner, pushed the liner down so far below this water line that or this part of the stream back and through here we get turned on. You can see the water line on the rocks. The liner was considerably lower than that water line. So we found, I think, three areas. One low area there, 100%, a weird overlap going this way, and then a weird overlap coming back this way. So when testing the right side, it would leak. When testing the left side, it would leak. And when testing this, it would leak. We're fixing this one. That should be good now. This is gonna take a little more time. Stay tuned. <laughs> When we're looking for leaks, we look for these big like, oh yeah, moments, right? Like we're so excited because like that has to be it. And I told you earlier that we thought it was in three spots, but as we continue to investigate, we be in this man. Look at how good I'm getting with the camera. I just keep following. Oh, like, uh, <laughs> look what we found. This is crazy. So as we started digging back through here, we started pulling out, what would you call it? It looked like a little alien nest behind <laughs> the rocks here, but we started pulling out the three different liners. We found the pond liner itself. We found the overlap for this taller waterfall. We found the overlap for the other spillway. And between the two overlap liners and the pond Wait, liner, wait, I see it about your head, but I don't want to show me yet. Like, are you guys ready for this? this it is. The suspense has got to be killing you because it's right. This is. Yeah, all right, show. This is crazy. I mean, at one point, this was all gravel. You can even see, like, the gravel still stuck in the root mass. What happened is this enormous silver maple back behind us. Those roots found that little bit of trickle in between the pieces of liner. And the water was still staying inside the pond liner but the roots found that jumped down in between the folds in the liner and developed a root structure and engulfed all that gravel that was in there and what happened was is this root mass started out as like a little hair like this and then ended up getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it pulled that liner down yep. so what happened was is even though our overlap was good at one point in time the silver maple sabotaged it pulled that liner down just by the root mass growing 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 and created a low edge back behind everything so you a never would have saw a it. low edge and we had like a weep hole so there was like this area back in here that if water level got too high, it could actually escape underneath that rock and come back out this other side over here. And like Chris said, that little tiny area there, this thing. you know, or something else along those lines, got in there. Once it found it, the tree said, yes, I love life over here. And it grew and grew and grew. It's kind of like a backed up toilet system or like a shower, right? Like right. I actually had the same thing happen to me in my house a few years ago where the village had to come out and roto root out those sewage lines because a silver maple yep. clogged up the lines, an old clay pipe. They went in there, found that water, that moisture got in there. And once the roots find that stuff, it'll grow really fast. Definitely not sewage. <laughs> <laughs> this is just, it's fascinating, really. Yeah, I mean, really kind of cool. We found it though. Now it's gonna be a fun part putting it back together, but that's what we like, building waterfalls. So that's true. good for us. Here we go. just about done. That obviously doesn't go. Swan's got to come out of the picture. <laughs> but we got the waterfall back together over here. We got this whole waterfall back together over there. In a lot of ways, it looks better than it did before. Uh, you can't see that now because Chris's culo is, <laughs> is in there. But that's okay because a little distraction before the reveal is just fine. But we got it taken care of. That's the most important thing. Just like before, when we do these leaks, we'll be back out here probably tomorrow or the next day just to double check the water level. So we've got two more rocks to get back in place about 20 minutes and we'll let that foam dry up and we should be good to go i love this pond how can you not right it's gorgeous like it's a woodland setting and once that waterfall gets going it's one of my favorite of all time
wrap. A little more than a day for Chris and I out here. We had a couple of guys helping us earlier yesterday. So funny because we were talking about like these repair type things and how long it can take for a repair and how much we can get done in a single day. Like there's a pond in a day, right? We can build a whole pond in one day when it's like virgin soil and everything else. It's a big piece of lawn. And that's what we're going to be doing. Now. Brad, buddy. <laughs> What's up? How long have we been waiting for this? Two years. Has it been two years? Yeah, a little over. <clears throat> April 2021. So tell me a little bit about the idea of getting a pond. What was the inspiration? It was just something that I've always wanted my whole life. And timing was right. And to start, go for it. And so why Aquascape? Because you're the best. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Brad, I came out here and you had marked out the... Now, I'm going to tease you a little bit because that's where we're at with our relationship. But I came out here before, I don't know, it felt like a month ago, maybe a few weeks ago, and you had marked out kind of your idea of the pond. I have to say it was more of like a rectangle, right? <laughs> yeah. The idea, I know, you were thinking just as much water as possible. You're right. a big fisherman, so you still have the idea of putting like some game fish in here and stuff. Right. Why are you okay with me changing the shape of your pond? Just because you know it's right. All right. There, there we go. <laughs> So you guys, this is going to be a huge transformation. I can't wait to show you how this is going to change. We actually came out here, it was a year ago, and helped Brad kind of lay out his patio. And the patio just turned out fantastic. And one of the things I mentioned to Brad was dropping in a couple big boulders just to help tie all the rock work that's going to be in here. And of course, we'll add some boulders outside of the pond as well, just to help tie things together. But one of my favorite things with this patio are the rocks. And then we got to play with the elevation. And because the yard goes like this he was able to do the step down for the fire pit and everything else so it's going to be a really awesome space uh, the pond is going in here modest sized pond it's like 12 feet by eight or nine feet this way waterfalls back there like we always do facing towards the house and one of the best views is going to be from this window right here this is a uh, kind of like a sunken family room and then of course you'll still get a view from the kitchen window back over in here looking at the waterfall oh i'll get back in there and show you that view later but right now our goal is to bring in a ton of soil. So we've got, how many yards did you get? Like 18? 18? 18 yards of soil to help berm all of this up. One of our biggest challenges with backyards when the yard slopes away from this, especially if the yard's sloping away like this and we want a waterfall coming back this way, we have to build up that side of the pond just to get things leveled off. And then if you build that side up, then it takes away from the waterfall. So then you got to build a bigger waterfall, et cetera, et cetera. And you need more dirt. And Brad has given us total creative freedom to do whatever we want. So this is going to be incredible. Incredible. You guys hang tight. This is going to be a fun, fun job. Well, we got some dirt back here, so that's great. I'm going to mark out this pond, pond all marked out, and then we're going to start building this. Hopefully, we get this thing done in one day. Uh, it'd be great. Huge accomplishment for us for the week, and then we'll get going. We're going to mark out the pond and set that biofalls, get the plumbing run. Here we go. A little bigger than an 8x11. We always go a little bigger. Biofalls is set up there. You can see how massive this berm is getting. It's just huge. I get a better appreciation when you come back over here. So again, when we're working against a grade, there's so much dirt that has to come in. Like, look at all of this. Just for about a 20 inch high waterfall. We'll probably even swing out this area here, out into here, just to lose more of this dirt. So we can really gently slope it. We want it to look like this, not like this. This is volcanic. This is nice and gradual. So you can see the guys grabbing the liner, the liner in there, and we're right on schedule. Hopefully we get the pond rocked in by lunchtime. So during lunch, it can be filling with water.
finished up lunch. Reason we don't stop rocking the pond until lunchtime is so during lunch, this pond can still be filling. So you can see we're working on some edges now. I think the key when doing edges um, is to really take your time. <laughs> There's a couple key things. First, you wanna make sure that nothing's low. That's why we're waiting for that pond to fill up before we start tucking in some edges over on this side. So you can see Chris kind of work in this area here. I went ahead and finished that back edge over in there. And I remember all of this will be land feet on that side. We use our zip level to make sure everything's nice and high, but we knew that side was high because the yard sloped like this. This edge will just be a little closer. I think the other key thing with the edges is make sure you break it up a little bit. You don't want the same edge all the way around. Like what I wouldn't want to see is a vein of gravel or a six inch strip of gravel all the way around there. You can see areas where the dirt comes in close. I've mixed up different types of gravel, even cobbles. Chris is going to do more cobbles, probably all the way out and through here. This edge, we're going to leave all soil so he can plant some ground covers in between the existing patio in that area. And then over in there, probably try to get that soil up as close as we possibly can so plants can come in really, really close. Almost done. After we get that, we'll start working on the waterfall and then we'll get the heck on out of here. on the waterfall is always my favorite part. We're looking to do like a big tall drop right in between these two stones there. The only thing I don't like right now is how parallel that looks. We might take that rock and just kind of like lean it forward, giving this more of like kind of a Y split in there. And then we'll get one drop out of there, one drop there, and then a little drop is gonna kind of come over this rock right in here. And then of course we'll need wing walls off to the side and now we'll get this thing all pieced together. I'm hoping we're out of here in the next like three hours. Totally removed the one rock. I couldn't get it rid of that parallel line in there. So we dropped this guy in there. And if we look really close, oh, there's my glove. If we look really close, you can see that this rock here is actually pitched backwards slightly. And I'm hoping I get 90% of that water through like that little V right there. I'll get a little something in between there just to give it some action. Next rock I gotta figure out is this one here, which kind of complement that one. So maybe not come quite as high because that's already a high point there. So this is low, it's hard to see with the, with the camera here, but this is low, that's high. So I, I come in kind of like on a slope maybe, like in here, I think that'll look great. Maybe even coming kind of square and then dig out something in there. But sometimes you just can't get a rack to work. You have to change like a jigsaw puzzle. Try a piece, try a piece, flip it around, twist it, turn it. If it still won't fit, get another piece. And so that's what we did. You can see little flags. A lot of times we'll come in and we'll drop little flags for just ideas for plants. You know, paper bark maples, grasses, you know, some creeping junipers to kind of come over the rocks, etc., etc. It'll look amazing when it's finished, but if it already looks this good now, it's only gonna look better when it's running and then 10,000 times better once all the plants and stuff get in. So the waterfall is gonna have really this deep, deep babbly brook type sound. You can remember before we had that big rock there and then another one and we had like that parallel like strip in there. We got rid of that put that one in and we got another one behind it, another one so we're gonna have one two three four falls all with more of this kind of babbly brook sound the only part i'm really curious about and what it's gonna do is this part right here so this rock is kind of pitched backwards you can see it and i don't know if when the water comes down through this crevasse if it's gonna shoot up and create a horse tail or kind of split around it 100 it's gonna give it a lot of sound if i hate it i just pull it out here tensionally tilted this rock you can see it there it's kind of like pitched to the left. We should get most of the water running from there to there, kind of falling into that little cove. Then this one, the same thing. This rock is pitched this way, so most of it should come off of this. I doubt we'll even get water over there, but maybe a little bit. And then this rock is, like I said, pitched backwards, and it should all run through there, hit that, and come over. So let's see if what we've said in our minds, designed with the rock and stuff, is actually going to happen. I think we're ready to turn this thing on. And then, because Brad, the customer of the year, back here <laughs> loves being on camera we're gonna get his oh, reaction as we turn it on i mean he's already look at he's blushing he's like he's ready to go but brad what do you think so far it's, it's better than 
prospect. Good, good. So what's the one thing you would tell future customers that you've learned through this process? Trust you guys. There you go. <laughs> That's what I was looking for. Because, uh, <laughs> design so yeah you guys know what you're doing awesome appreciate that brad all right let's yeah. fire this up and see what you think right. oh it's spread out over that rock way more than i thought <laughs> What do you think of that little horsetail thing? Should we leave it or not? I think we'll leave it. I like it. I love how it's a cover and everything. It looks so good. <laughs> uh, that is awesome. High five. That is awesome. High five. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, that water is way thicker than I thought it was gonna be coming over all of them. Like we intentionally pitched those rocks and it's like covering everything. I had to show you guys the view from inside the house because it's so, so important. But obviously this was Brad's chair at the kitchen table. So of course we lined up his chair as he sits down right with that waterfall over there. So, so important. Other area of the house that's just so great is you come down here, split level basement here, great little room. He's going to end up in this space, just kind of doing a small little like bistro type table, maybe build some kind of custom desk or something. But look at this view. Come around here oh yeah get a nice view of brad's legs <laughs> but look at that i mean that is killer the view from inside the house is just so so important i cannot wait to come back here with you guys show you what this thing looks like planted this is a one day pond a little eight by 11 foot pond and i think what's so special about this is small ponds make huge huge impacts hope you like this Bye. what an awesome week i know i learned a lot especially with that customer out there in st charles i mean that tree root was massive and now we know how to tackle stuff like that really make sure we get those overlaps in there make sure we keep trees away <laughs> you know i'm just kidding that was a once in a lifetime leak i don't think we'll ever see anything like that again but at least we know where we can look if we can't find a leak like we did with hers and how about the view from inside brad's house i mean what a super cool guy that view from the basement window that like semi sunken basement and what an awesome guy i know he's gonna love love that pond and believe it or not he just sent me a video about three days ago and he's already got bass and bluegill and a little crappie in there. So I can't wait to take you back at some point and show you how that pond's evolving. If you guys thought this week was fun, wait till next week where we get Chris Hansen way more involved in our vlogs because maintenance is such a huge part of Team Aquascape. We want to make sure you we're constantly educating you. So we're going to show you guys how to reseal a skimmer face, how to reseal a biofalls, look for some low edges here and there. And then of course, maybe bring you out on this project a little bit more because I know you want to know what I'm doing with a seven foot boulder. So we'll get that in there some point here or there. You guys know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe. Tell us what your favorite part was last week and we'll do it again this week. Bye.